This is Steve Mason. The story we are going to tell, though, is not his. Our story is about the building Steve works in and the people who make that building come alive. Our story is about a library. Although this library is a new one, it is not much different from most, and the people you will see might be your own neighbors, like Miss Spencer, the librarian. Well, that's about all for today, isn't it, Miss Spencer? Yes, good night, Steve. Fine, so long, see you Monday. Hi there, young fellow. How's the library business? All swell, Mr. Williams. See you. Go on. Hello. Hello. That Mason boy's a nice kid. Yes, he's one of the best workers we've had in a long time. Hey, what is there about this place that's so fascinating to a boy like Steve? He must be a bookworm. <laughs> Steve likes books, if that's what you mean, Jim, but that doesn't keep him from playing ball every chance he can get. Well, I can't understand where the fascination lies. For you and for him. Of course, I know there's plenty of excitement in books. Then I'm sure neither of you has much time to read on the job. How right you are. Then what is it, Harriet? What keeps you and Steve, all the rest of your staff, so, so keyed up about the library? What does? Why, people, Jim. People are always exciting. And we feel we're here to help them and to stimulate their interest. Well, what could be more exciting? Here, look. These cards are a record of everyone who's registered in the library. Hundreds of people, all kinds. Why, Jim, if you could sit here with me and listen to their questions and hear their problems and all about their interests, well, maybe you'd understand what the library means to me and to Steve and to all the rest of us. Well, we have a little time. Why not tell me about some of them? All right. Well, whom shall we start with? Oh, well, here, pick one at random. Who is this fellow, uh, Abbott Franklin? It's funny that you should pick his name first. Well, but then maybe it isn't funny at all because, do you know, Jim, that man is on hand every morning. Every day the library is open, Mr. Abbott shows up. Sometimes even before I do. He's a retired lawyer working on a book about the history of this community. He spends most of the morning over there in the microfilm room, doing research, reading over back issues of local papers photographed on film, and making pages of notes. But you'd be just as liable to find him later in the day, buried behind a newspaper magazine, trying to keep abreast of world events as well as things that happen right here in town. And then Mr. Abbott will show up whenever I'm setting up a new exhibit in the art room. You know, we often feature the works of local artists here. And in that gallery, Mr. Abbott gets even more material for his book about the community. But no matter how busy he is about his own matters, he's never too busy to notice other people and take a real interest in them. Like the time he noticed Nancy Smith taking a fancy to some paintings we had on display. Nancy was a girl who never quite knew what she was interested in. She used to come to the library and browse a lot, but she really wanted some hobby. And it took old Mr. Abbott to draw her into an interesting subject. Nancy became very enthusiastic over painting. Now we have some of her own paintings on display here. Well, Jim, do you believe now that there's more to this library business than meets the eye? Well, I'm beginning to see what you mean. Here, let's take another one of these cards. Oh, this one belongs to Charlotte Gordon. She came in here for the first time about two months ago. She'd never used a library much before that, and confided in me that she wanted to design and make her own costume for the class play. Well, you know how that touched me, because designing is one of my favorite hobbies. So, of course, I took a special interest in Charlotte. We went through the card catalog to begin with. She was going to be satisfied looking under C only for costume designing. 
But I showed her how there might be some more information under dressmaking and in some other categories, too. Charlotte set up shop, you might say, over there in the main reference room. And I confess I kept running over every time I could spare a moment to see how she was doing. Was it long before the designing was done? And you know, she came in just today to show us all the finished product. And believe me, it was a job worth showing. I felt some pride in it myself, especially since I saw how Charlotte's work was appreciated by her own friends over there in the teenage room. It's funny, I once doubted the wisdom of having such a room in the library. I thought it might not be used, but nothing could be further from the truth. Actually, the young people get so much from the magazines and pamphlets we have there that you couldn't keep them out. It's their room, and they use it often. And no wonder. The things we keep in there are designed especially with teenage interests in mind. Pamphlets on dating and going steady. Magazines on sports and hobbies. And of course, a complete file of college catalogs. So you see, Jim, these are some of the reasons why a librarian loves her job. Go ahead, pick another card. Telling you about these people is almost as exciting as actually meeting them. Oh, let's see. Whom did you draw this time? Lawrence Winifred. Oh, Miss Lawrence. That's interesting. She comes here about twice a week. Oh, you must have seen her around town. She's blind. But that's just one more reason that books are so important to her. She gets so much out of them. Sometimes I think maybe more than ordinary people like us because she's had to learn to read all over again. She reads with her fingers in the braille corner. In that way, she can keep abreast of current literature or indulge in any of the classics she may select. And she often sits and listens by the hour to the talking book records that the government makes available to the blind through libraries. Well, that reminds me. You know, of course, that we have other kinds of records here, too for use by anyone, our regular music library. People listen to them here or take the record albums home. And of course, we also have a very up-to-date film library, consisting mostly of educational films. But we also have some documentaries and some other informational films. Records and films? I guess I must be old-fashioned. I always thought the library was a place to get books. Yes, Jim, books are important. But the whole idea of the library has changed recently to keep up with changing times. Nowadays, people get their ideas from many places. Newspapers, magazines, records, films, television, all kinds of sources. Well, since the library serves the community, we feel we have to keep up with the changing times. Well, I suppose you're right. But I'll still think of the library as a place to come for books. <laughs> you should, Jim, you should. Finding the right book for our patron is still the most important duty of the librarian and her staff. We'll often go out of our way to get a book from outside for one of our patrons. From outside? Yes. For instance, the other day, a boy by the name of Arnie Peterson came in. He wanted a book on jet engines. It was something very scientific, I believe. He'd read all the books on the subject in his high school library, and he wanted something special. We didn't have it in our catalog, so I promised Arne I would try to get it from another library. And sure enough, the book came in a week later, and you should have seen Arne settle down to study it. So you see, Jim, we'll go out of our way to get a book for our patrons. But books alone are often not enough. Here, these cards will illustrate my point. <laughs> Almost. The Allen family trooped in here one day with the announcement that they were going to Alaska and what they didn't want to know about Alaska. Honestly, I thought I was going to have to take a trip there myself to satisfy them. We started with books we got by referring to a number of subjects in the catalog. And believe me, that's where a librarian has to be on her toes. But books alone didn't satisfy the Allens. 
Mr. Allen had to have information on current conditions. So I showed him how to look up the subject in the reader's guide. And the children wanted to see some pictures of the country and the people. Well, Mrs. Allen naturally wanted to know about the weather and the grocery prices, since they planned to stay for three months. When the Allens left here this afternoon, they were really ready to study up on Alaska. They even took films on the subject home with them. So you see, Jim, books alone are not enough. The library has to cater to the interests of all its patrons. Sometimes to do this, we have to order things from other libraries. Sometimes all we have to do is arrange to let a group use our conference room. I can't see why you'd need a conference room in the library. I just can't see it. There's your answer, Jim. Hmm. Now, take this group, for instance. Each Tuesday, this group meets here. Generally, there's a panel discussion on some topic of importance. I rarely miss a meeting myself if I can help it. Yes, Jim, I'm sure that conference room of ours does its share to serve the community. It's one room I wouldn't want to be without. And here's another. Well, even I can understand that. I can imagine what goes on in here in the course of a day. You probably have a story going on in one corner of the room. That's right, Jim. Shirley Hunter is known far and wide for the way she can tell a story. And then there's probably a group of kids using those tables to color on. Right. And some others reading or working on projects. Exactly, Jim. Take the Brownies, for instance. They're busy working on a play about nurses. You know, Jim, I think that down deep you're beginning to understand what a library is all about. Well, maybe so. At any rate, I can't think of a more pleasant way of finding out. Even if we did spend almost an evening on it. Oh, is it that late? Well, we better get ready to go. Okay, I'll get your coat. Say, what a coincidence. Here's a book I've been wanting to read. It's not a coincidence, Jim, that this book was out where you could see it. What do you mean? You saw this book because in the first place it's still in its original jacket. Book jackets are designed to be eye-catching and the titles are easy to read. And we anticipate our patrons' interest. Oh, how is that? Well, this book was part of a display. A display designed to put the books that you may want to read in a place they'll have no trouble catching your eye. You see, Jim, librarians not only answer questions when asked, but try to go out and stimulate interest. Suggest new books and try and bring the library to the public. Well, you've certainly sold me. Now, how about it? Do I get to take this book home? Yes, sir, if I may see your library card. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I still have one. Yes, Jim's beginning to understand the fascination the library has for the people who work in it and the people who use it. A fascination due to books and records films and art exhibits, and a hundred little services that only a library can render. For people know that whether their library serves a particular group, or specializes in one period, or one study, or attempts like the Library of Congress to store all kinds of recorded knowledge, people know that the library is a place where they can come to relax, refresh their minds, and find out something about the world they live in and about themselves. <laughs>